Right. <clears throat> we just wanted to have an overview of the common weeds in Zimbabwe. Uh, this lecture will help you to be able to familiarize uh, yourselves with the, the weed species uh, which we have in this country. Probably this is the good time because we have weeds all over the place. Uh, you may be able to identify these weeds. And this is the uh, and this could help you to, to do that uh, identification uh, process. So I will start with the first weed, which is Ipomia plebia, Sabi morning glory, or Ukatewe. Um Danyan. No, it looks like. He sweet potatoes if you look at the leaves now it imagines uh, it has got a v, it has got v shaped cotyledons you can see the this uh, v shaped cotyledon so we can use the structure of the cotyledons to identify it at a medium or a young stage. This one is Biden's pylosa. Uh, at this stage, it has got these uh, seeds which tend to cling to animal skin or clothes. Black Jack Cine or Moo. Now it imagines the stem is a uh, dark brown and it has got uh, elongated uh, cotyledons which are opposed to each other. They are narrow and elongated. Now, I'll also talk about the cotyledons of the next wheat. This is Tagitas Minuta, uh, Mexican uh, Marigold, Kambanje. Now, this wheat is noted for its uh, smell which is known as the khaki boss uh, smell. And also the leaves, which you have got a serrated uh, margin. So if you compare the cotyledons of uh, Black Jack with that of Agitas uh, Minuta, because sometimes they look, you know, similar. You know, if you look at this, sometimes you may mistake it to be black jack. Uh, you may focus on the first true leaves, which have got these serrations. Uh, that way, you may quickly pick the guitar's minute seedling. You can see this is the serrated the margin otherwise the cotyledons may resemble those of a uh, uh, black jack this is shuria pinata waf mary gold rukarwa it is characterized by very thin leaves in fact if you look at the leaves it's just a display of uh, the veins of the leaves you may just think it's the veins 
they, there's no leaf blood as such. So it's like uh, you are displaying uh, leaf veins in the air. Uh, Shkuria Pinata, Waf Mary Gold or Rukarwa. Some people think that this could be, uh, this can be used to treat people with the running stomach. They just take the, the, the plant and they put it in water so that uh, somebody has to drink the aridopathic extracts of this plant. This one is Kileom monophila, spindle pod, jacari. Uh, this is used as a vegetable by many people. It's reddish, I mean, it is used as a reddish. This is spin report at emergence. If you look at the cotyledons, which we use for identification, you can see they are broad. This is the Datura stramonia uh, stingbla choa. Uh, this is a very toxic uh, weed. All parts of the plants are toxic. Right. It imagines the display of the cotyledons uh, resemble Biden's pylosa. The only thing which you can do to distinguish these, uh, the two, is probably by trying to squeeze the cotyledon, which gives a very pungent uh, smell. Otherwise, uh, you may not be able to tell the difference between Biden's pylosa and the Datura stramonium. This is Faisalis angulata, a wild gooseberry. Now, this is the plant at a mature stage. Sometimes we use the flowers which are not clear here. Or we use the, the fruit which is edible. This one provides an edible uh, fruit. Now, this is Faisalis angulata, it emergence. Now, if we focus on the cotyledons, some people will describe them as trowel shaped. You know, that thing which is used in building. The, 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 it, it gives the shape of a trowel. And the cotyledons, in most cases, are positioned at an angle. This is the feature which we use so that we can distinguish it from the next uh, weed, which is known as the Nicandra physaloids, April of Peru. So this is the April of Peru, Urugumachembere, at a small stage. 
if we look at the cotyledons, they may resemble that of Faisalis angulata, but these are in a straight line. They are in a straight line. And they may not be, yeah, they, they, we can only use the, the arrangement of the cotyledons to, to distinguish it from the previous weight. You can see they are, they, these, uh, these cotyledons are in a straight line. They are arranged in a straight line. But if I study Sangurata, this should be angled. This one is Garin Soga Paviflora, Garan Soldier, Charendo. Uh, it has got tiny flowers and it is associated with the irrigated places, especially in horticultural uh, crops. Now, it imagines the cotyledons are slightly round, but uh, if you look closely, you will see a dent at the cotyledon. So they are they are they have dented cotyledons. And this is one of the features which we just use uh, to identify the seedlings of Garden Soga Paviflora. The next weed is Lucas Martinsensis. Bobbin wheat, Yamatunga. This wheat is a late wheat. We normally see it around May, June, thereabouts. It doesn't come in early during the onset of the season. This one again, the at maturity is easily identified because of these bobbins. That's why it is known as the bobbin wheat. Now it imagines the cotyledons are similar to those of garden soga paviflora, which are smooth and nearly round. But uh, a closer look at the cotyledons of bobbin wheat, you'll find that they don't possess a dent on their edges. And we can use that feature to separate them from uh, garden soga paviflora. And see, this is garden soga paviflora. It has a dent. So there's something, uh, you know, just have to look carefully. You will see the, this dent. Whereas this is, you know, continuous, smooth. This one is Ajaratam conzoids, very good wheat. Kabarikire. Uh, it's a hairy plant. Now, if you look at the cotyledons, they are also round. They are more or less similar to those of the two previous weeds. But these ones, when they image, you know, they are very small compared to the previous uh, weeds. <coughs> And if you look at their leaf, at their stalks, the part which joins them to the stem, 
is a bit long. So these cotyledons are sort of projected away from the stems by sort of a thin leaf stalk. Uh, these are some of the details which take time to uh, to, to, to I mean, you, it may take time to acquire some of these skills. Some of these details may not be obvious, but the, the quarterly don is round, which it makes it similar to Garin Soga and Lucas Martinsensis. But now the difference is the, in the size of the courtly don and also the orientation of the courtly don. We have got here Ericardia scabra, Mexican clover, Chinzungu. This is Zamban. This is one of the most common weeds uh, in Arab uh, areas especially on the sandy soils, which are depleted. Well, it's a spreading uh, plant, but sometimes it is really up, upright. If you see it upright, <coughs> uh, it means you have got several plants and it is trying to compete for light. <coughs> The leaves have got a sort of shiny appearance. And if you look closely at the leaves, they tend to have a, a, a sort of a, a narrow trench or a groove. And this will be some of the key identifying uh, features. Acanthospema mispidam, upright, star bay, shidong. It's a hairy plant and it has some uh, seeds uh, with some uh, spines. It's well known for those uh, spines. Well, this is the planted uh, emergence. The cotyledons are quite smooth, but when you want to identify it, you use both cotyledons and the first true leaves. The feature of the first true leaves is that uh, they are hairy, as opposed to the smooth and totally don't. This one is the Coniza arubida, flea ben, or gonzo. It's also a liquid. Uh, which is hairy. The key feature at, uh, when it is uh, uh, small is that it has a rosette appearance. It has a rosette appearance. And it imagines the <coughs> cotyledons are also very small. And it is closer to the ground. Oxalis latifolia, people garden sorrel, salt wheat, chimun. Uh, Maybe you have seen this uh, weed associated with the 
uh, irrigated uh, crops. We say it has got a, a butterfly shape, the leaf. And it's got a purplish, uh, tiny flowers. Uh, we use these butterfly shaped leaves. There are three of them at emergence. If you see this uh, shape, uh, you know it's Oxalis ratforia. If you dig <coughs> this uh, plant, <coughs> You are going to find that uh, it has a barb underneath. So it can uh, reproduce through seed and barbs. It's called chimunyu because uh, it tastes like uh, salt. This is hibiscus, you say, stock rose. So sorry. This weed looks like uh, cotton. In fact, at emergence, it is around the cotyledons, which looks which look exactly like those of uh, cotton. So, in a cotton field, it may be very difficult uh, to distinguish the cotton plants and this wheat. It emerges with the two round, almost round cotyledons. It images with, uh, you know, projecting very round uh, cotyledons. This is Kenopodium album, fetian, lump squatters or casunica. Uh, it is normally associated with wheat, and this wheat uh, could have come from uh, Europe with wheat. It's one of the imported uh, wheats, but in summer it's now also found. But it's it's a it's a very common wheat uh, in Europe. Now, Kenopodium album has got a lot of hairs, which are white hairs. You would think there is some sort of powder or frost on its leaves. That is, it's, that, that is the appearance of the uh, of that uh, leaf. So, if you see a plant appearing as, as if there's some powder on it. It could be Canopodia marbum, especially uh, at emergence. Here we don't just we don't even use uh, cotyledons. We just use that characteristic, you know, whitish stuff, which is present on this wheat. This is Amaranthus hybridus, pigweed, bonongo. Uh, it has got a, a wine reddish color. It's one of the characteristics, especially on this term. And it is distributed on the leaf, this uh, wine red color. At emergence, although the cotyledons could in some ways resemble those of black jack, it's this wine reddish color which we use to distinguish it from any other seedling. So it is this very you know, distinct wine reddish color.
Ochulaka uri rasia president chifandi chimuka chifandi chimuka because if you try to weed this plant it can break down into small pieces which regenerate uh, it is also what we call the cam plant grassulasin acid metabolism this plant can uh, close its stomata during the day, which means uh, carbon dioxide may not enter through it because it is using carbon dioxide from uh, the vacuoles. It opens its stomata during the night which allow carbon dioxide to enter into this uh, plant now it becomes an efficient competitor for carbon dioxide because if there are any environmental changes which causes the stomata to close this one is already it already has a closed stomata and it can uh, survive harsh environments now it imagines uh, it also possesses this wine reddish color just like uh, amaranthus hybridus but uh, we can distinguish the two because uh, Pochulaca orirasia has got uh, a fleshy sort of appearance, number one, and the cotyledons are not uh, very, uh, are not elongated as such. So you use the fleshy sort of appearance, I think if you want to distinguish it from uh, uh, Amaranthus hybridus. When we have finished with the broad-leaved weeds, we are now talking about Cyperus rotundus or purple nut sage or purple nut grass dave. This is a common weed in irrigated uh, places. Now, the stem is triangle shaped. That's why it is a sedge. Underneath, we have got a a bulb, then this bulb is joined by uh, it's not a root structure, we call it the rhizome. Now, that rhizome is also joined to a chain of tubers, that is why it is difficult to control because when you are using mechanical methods, you tend to break these chains and you and as a result the domains is broken then the tubers will start to form new plants so this is cyperas rotundas people that search uh, at a medium stage. If you look at the seed head, when it is mature, uh, it may appear to be purplish, but sometimes it may be difficult uh, to see. This one is uh, Cyperus esculentus. It's more or less similar to Cyperus rotundus. In fact, 
if if these weeds are growing together, uh, it may be very difficult to distinguish which is which. This is yellow nut sage because of the yellow sediment. The previous weed is a purple nut sage because of the purple sediment. Now, if you dig this plant, you are going to see a bulb similar to that of uh, Cyperus rotundus. But uh, the rhizome will terminate into a single tuber. That is the way the difference is. The Cyperus rotundus, the uh, rhizome form a chain of tubers. There are several tubers which are joined uh, on the Cyperus uh, rotundus. This was just the, the, the rhizome simply terminate into a single tuber. So if you are using mechanical methods, it may be easy to control Cyperus esculendus versus Cyperus rotundus. Uh, this is the medium stage of Cyperus esculendus. It looks exactly similar to Cyperus rotundus. If you want to distinguish which is which, there's a need to dig uh, these weeds and examine the bulbs and the tubers so that uh, one can distinguish the two. The other technique which you can use is to actually test the tubers. Cyperus esculentus tubers could be sweet and they are actually edible. Thinned. The other tubers of Cyperus uh, rotundus are not edible. If you try to test them, they taste like a diesel. That is, if you have tested diesel at all. But they have got a bad test. Now, this is a Comerana bengalensis wandering Jew, Goche. <coughs> this is the boundary between broad leaves and grasses. Now, it has got broad leaves and the veins are parallel. It can reproduce by subtraining uh, seeds as well as aerial seeds. If you use mechanical methods, it can actually regrow from the stems. So it can be difficult to, with the, to control. Now, when it is image, it has got a characteristic funnel shaped leaf, which is closer to the ground. So if you see some funnel shaped leaves closer to the ground, you know you've got a uh, Comirena bengalensis. Uh, in maize, jewel or metal crop can sort this uh, weed. It can easily control this uh, weed. So if you've got a problem in maize, normally if you mix atrazine and the jewel or metarocro and apply them uh, pre-emergence, uh, you may get rid of uh, comelina bengalensis. Now we we'll move on to the first grass, which is Eurocroa pancoids, Garden Eurocroa or Romande. 
Now, normally we use this uh, CD end. In fact, on the grasses, we just look at the shape of the CD end. Normally, it displays these uh, few. Uh, they, they look like branches, but they, they've got some seeds. It's the flower head. Now, it imagines this weed has got a very broad leaves. That is the key to its identification as a seedling. So you look at a grass which has got a broad leaf, make sure it could be Euroclore. The other one is uh, Panicum Novem Nev. Panicum. Barahanga. Uh, you also look at the seed head, uh, which is, uh, you know, very, you know, it has got thin branches. That is the seed head. If I move backwards to Eurocroa, you can see that of Eurocroa is quite uh, distinct from that of this one, uh, which is quite uh, big, but with very thin branches displaying seeds. It imagines, it also is, these uh, broad uh, leaves. So how do we distinguish these two? Let, let me move back a bit. Now, this Euroclaw has got uh, leaves one of the first leaf, which is almost at right angles to the to the stem. And we also look at the height from the ground. We look at the stem. This Eurocroa is projected well above the soil surface. Whereas that one is very close to the ground. So probably the, to distinguish the two, we check at the stem. If the stem is holding the leaves towards the ground, it means you have got a panic up. If the stem is a bit projected above the ground, then uh, you know it's a uh, uh, Eurocrow. But of course, these things you, you, you need constant, you know, observation over a period of time. Then you'll be able to distinguish them uh, quickly. This is Rotboria cocin kinensis, chamber grass, each grass. In foul grass or wave. Now we know this plant has got uh, some hairs. If, if you try to hand pull it, uh, it can irritate because of these itchy hairs. Now it imagines it resembles sometimes it may resemble maize. It mimics maize. In other words, you may not know which is which, but it's very thin compared to maize. But sometimes you may not know uh, the difference. But if you look uh, from where it is emerging, 
you may observe little cylinders, cylindrical seeds. If you see a lot of cylindrical seeds and these plants, uh, probably you can easily uh, distinguish this uh, Rodiboria cocaine kinensis. Edusini indicara poco grass, sawi, mombe. And this looks like a cultivated rapoko because of the uh, flat stem. There will also have differences with the rapoko on the seed yet. But uh, this is one of the weed which mimics uh, cultivated rapoko. Now it imagines it has this uh, flat stem. So when it is growing with rapoko, it's very difficult to, uh, to, to distinguish. This is Setaria vitisilata, big grass. It's a notorious weed because of its seed which tends to cling to clothes, especially socks. Now, once it has gone to your clothes, you will struggle to remove, to remove it. You may end up giving up. So it can stick. Uh, to animal skin or to clothes. It's also part of its uh, dispersal. Cetaria vetislata. Now, it imagines it is a Term which may look like that of uh, Elusin Indica. But later on, it will become uh, round. And this one is quite uh, thin. So it imagines it may resemble Elusin Indica, but uh, if you look closely at the stems, if you see some of the stems being round, then you know you've got a cetaria vetislat. But otherwise, it imagines uh, it may look like a, a lucine indica. Cetaria pumida. Anymore, uh, and you are Timothy, thinner grass, a chirara minorous grass. It's known for its, you know, seed yet, which is it's like a, a seed yet of uh, pyramid but this is only a thin grass, but the shape is just like a, the seeds of pyramid. Ceteria pumida, you know, it imagines, it resembles, it, it is very thin. I mean, compared to other grasses. So we can use that feature of being characteristically very thin to distinguish it from other grasses. And you can see the, the leaves are not broad. Mirenis repents, Natal red top, fairy grass or bracuacha. Now, the seed 
can easily be carried by the wind. So dispersal could be through uh, wind. Uh, this can be easily identified, this one. Although the leaves are broad, like the first weeds which I was describing, this one, you look at the position of the leaf and the stem. They are almost, they form almost a right angle. If you look at the case here, they look almost at the right angle. Sorry. So if you see a grass which is projecting its leaves, and the leaves are almost at right angles to the stem, that should be Milenis repents. Cynodon dactylon, uh, kuchi grass. Now, kuchi grass is a, a perennial weed which can be produced by stems and rhizomes as well as a seed. Uh, we know this is a very difficult uh, weed to remove. It may be also be aridopathic. It can produce some uh, agrochemicals into the soil, which can affect other plants. This is kuchi grass at a medium stage. We can easily identify this uh, kuchi grass. Uh, there are also some rhizomes underneath. Above the soil, there will be stolons, which can also reproduce. So there is vegetative reproduction as well as uh, seeds. What we know is that uh, it's a very difficult uh, weed to remove. We can use glyphosate <coughs> for its control. Well, this is striga, which is a parasitic weed. And within it, you can see other weeds. So this is a striga in the field. This is striga fobsii. This is a SC513, which was affected by strike. This is Banbara nuts, which have been affected by a Electra Vogeli. This could be a situation in the field where there are various weeds. We have the Acanthospema, Mispidum, there's a Striga, there's Targetus minuta, there's Zathium strumaria, there's also Bidens uh, pilosa. So in a field, you now have you know a mixture of weeds. Normally we use quadrats and count the weeds and identify them. So that's it. Okay. Are you still there? Yes, sir. Okay, let me. 
for recording. <laughs>